Welcome back to episode 6 of my City Skylines 2 Let's Play series. For today, our founder James Smith has come across another major problem. So we've lured in big companies such as Apple, Facebook, and Tesla to have their headquarters downtown in Stamford. The problem is that those big companies need an airport to get to and from multi-billion dollar meetings. So for today, he, James reached out to Frank Abagnale, our city planner, to start the design process of building an international airport and upgrading our transportation system here in the town of Stamford. Let's get started. Welcome back to Stamford. The very first thing we have to do is go over to our dev points. And what we need to do is unlock both the regional airport, which is called air for four dev points. And we also need to unlock the international airport, which is going to also cost us eight additional dev points. So make sure we have 26 developmental points right now. Make sure you have plenty because you're going to need 12 dev points in order to create the international airport. All right, so now that we have everything unlocked, what you're gonna see here is we have the tab for the airport, which is currently unlocked, and we clicked on the international airport. You're gonna see here the international airport is humongous. Like originally, I wanted to place the airport to that island on the right-hand side, and you're gonna see it's just way too big, so I decided to place the international airport on this peninsula. You know, it's surrounded by three sides of water, land surrounded by three si sides of water, a peninsula. Anyways, so now that we figure out basically where we want to place it, we could easily just click down and call it a day. But what I would like to do next is look at the contour lines and you're like, holy cow, there is a mini mountain. So what we need to do next is going to be, we're going to do this quick, but we're just going to flatten the land around it. So then this way, our airport does not have the Biffa lumpies and bumpies, basically. So we wanted everything smooth and everything to look good. So next, we have the International Airport. It's going to cost us $4 million, but give us a plus 10 for demand for city software and plus 10 for interested graduates. We'll get further into that once we actually place it. I'll go over exactly what comes with the International Airport. All right. So we placed down the International Airport again, like I already mentioned, it is massive, like absolutely huge. So again, I'll go through what the International Airport provides, 10% to citywide attractiveness, 10% to university education, 10% to demand for software. And you can also see it does come with its own parking lot where we can create parking fees. Now. For right now, I do want to place the airport out of service. We don't want to pay the full amount for the airport while we're trying to build around it. Now you can see here that this airport is, it's going to be very difficult to build around because you're kind of stuck with certain things. So for example, there is one of our runways and you can see there in the light blue box is restrictions of building in and next to our international airport so for step number two is now that we have our international airport in place what I would like to build next is the regional airport now you're gonna tell me sports monkey why are we building two airports right next to each other well that is a great question so we built the regional airport right next to one of our runways and you're gonna see here this is where this is why we wanted to do this so we wanted to have the, all the runways go in the same direction, but here, the not the business lounge, but the cargo terminal, which provides cargo air, you know, basically cargo planes. And we have cargo storage up to 72,000 tons of goods, which is a lot. 72 is a lot. And you can see, there you go. The upgrade actually shows up when you actually do upgrade the airport and so now that we have that in place it had it actually looks really cool by the way having trains actually come into the train station is awesome so next what we need to start off with is we need to connect both airports up and make sure we you know create a nice pattern so the very first thing I wanted to do was connect the regional airport and when I originally used a single lane road 
I realized it looked like hot garbage. Because I tried, what I wanted to do was I wanted to add sound barriers to the road itself. But the problem is, is you can only upgrade sound barriers to highways in city skylines too. So once I realized that mistake, I quickly deleted those roads. And what I eventually did was I added a highway road. So I used the highway road where you can go one, basically both directions. It is a two way single lane highway. So it kind of does look similar to the single lane road, except it's just a highway. That's honestly the only major difference. So the reason why I wanted to add sound barri barriers is if you do have an airport near residential area, you're gonna see that there are a bunch of these sound barriers. Now those are, that's a highway sound barrier, but there are sound barriers in real life that protect and keep the sound from you know adjacent neighborhoods because oftentimes airports are built near residential area now if you have unless you're like the denver airport which is in like the middle of nowhere but anyways i will keep going so anyways so now that we have that road in place we want to make sure that we connect our international airport with our regional airport so you can see here we're just using a single lane road we're going straight across and we're just gonna bring down that highway to connect it up really, really quickly. So, so now we click on the highway. Again, we just wanna use that same highway road, just bring it straight down. It, it will be a little weird to have a highway road there, but I don't think ultimately once everything is built up, I think it will all be okay. I definitely like the sound barriers. I wish we went all the way down the runway, but whatever, it's, it's okay. I think I'll survive. Anyway, so now let's go to the other side of our international airport. Yeah, again, very massive and make sure everything is connected. There's multiple, multiple, multiple sections of road that need to be connected to the airport. Like the roads that we just placed in front, there is a cargo terminal. So that's why we needed to connect those roads also like that. Next, you're gonna see here, we need to connect the railway, excuse me, the railway. So what I want to do next is we want to have passenger lines coming to and from the international airport. You know, for our customers from Tesla, Facebook and whatnot, they need an easy way to get to the airport from downtown. If they have a big meeting and need to go to the international airport, we want to quickly be able to have them take a metro or a subway or a bus or a train make sure they get to the airport as quickly as possible and they're not stuck in traffic to miss their flight. That was very important to our founder, James Smith, and just what he was exactly looking for in this build. So we have finally our railway. Just I feel like the railway in City Skylines 2 using the International Airport, it's in such a bad spot that you have to build around it. And I had to place that rail line first. Now, the next part, what I wanted to do was I wanted to add a highway exit because I want to place down residential right in that field to the right. And then to the left, I want to make sure that, you know, we, we have a highway connecting our airport together. So this way, you know, again, if people decide to drive instead of taking our amazing public transportation, that they can easily get to and from the airport in a quick manner and just making sure that there is additional highway usage that they can actually use. Well, again, making lives easier. And we all know in City Skylines 2, traffic is ridiculous. So, you know, we wanna make sure that if we're building highways and whatnot, that we're trying to make it as efficient as possible. So let's quickly connect these highways up, make it look good and very simple, easy connections. Now everything is back on track. So next, what I would like to do is I wanna use the a highway road, but I wanna use the two lane road, two way highway road, two lane high, wow, say that really fast, the two lane highway road. So what I'm doing is I'm, like I mentioned before, I'm connecting up the highway. So what I'm going to do is I wanna swing that highway and I wanna put it along the railway because we wanna build we need, if you've ever gone to an airport, what do airports normally have? They have bus stations, they have taxi stations, now they have Uber 
stations and stuff like that. So we need to have parking and just give people a reason to come down to the airport. All right, so now that we have all of this in place, you're gonna see here that the International Airport does come with parking, but we want additional parking, all right? We don't want that fake parking that's already connected. So, like I mentioned before, I would like to swing the highway, and I want it to go along the railway, so then this way, we're kind of creating an area where we can just build everything in between what we currently have. And overall, this highway is going to be a very fast high pace highway. So again, people are gonna get in and out of our city as quickly, in and out of our city, excuse me, in and out of our airport as quickly as possible. So there we go. We finally created a nice curve. And what I would like to do next is in City Skylines 2, what's really cool is you can build highways or roads on top of each other. So my goal was to go directly over the train station or the train line just to make sure that, you know, just kind of cover it up almost. You know, just to, you know, like just cover it up to the point where, you know, they kind of are both working together, just one on top of another. So again, in City Skylines 2, you can do this. In City Skylines 1, you are not able to do this unless you add the Move It mod. So very cool idea, I thought, just to place over and build over, you know, this airport highway. And there you go, we got, we are directly above our rail line that's going in and out of the airport. So everything so far looking good. I did want to increase that right hand turn and using the complex road tool, I did make that right hand turn and I connected it. That one, that turn by the way, looks way smoother than the original one. All right, so now the question of the day is, what do you need to do next? And what I decided to do was I placed a single lane road to the right. And what I wanted to do was, the problem with the City Skylines 2 airport is that the airport itself is a giant one-way system. As you can see above, it's just one way in and one way out, and you can't edit that at all. Well, at least not yet with mods. So what I decided to do was I wanted to create the split in our highway just to make it look right. So right now I'm trying to mirror the other side. Now I know it's a little bit more difficult. You can see here I'm measuring it out and using the road tool from City Skylines 2. But the problem is, is we're trying our best. We're eyeballing it. And you can see the certain amount of degrees and stuff like that. Like it's it's not the easiest thing in the world to eyeball, but eventually everything does come back over and it, it does work out really well. And so there we go. We're just trying to even it out and then we're gonna, tr we're just slowly using that road tool. The to road tool is amazing. It's just very tedious and clunky sometimes. But I think without mods, I think that is okay. I think that is an okay split. I think it looks cool. Not mad at it at all. All right, so now that we have that in place, what we want to do is we want to create an area for parking and additional services here at our international airport. So I wanted to make sure that this was a medium-sized road because this is going to handle all of our airport traffic. Ooh, that, this is where everything gets interesting. So the left-hand side, while I was designing this, I figured that the left-hand side can be all of our services, all of our service buildings and office buildings, then everything to the right of the international airport where we're going into right now is going to hold all of our parking, all of our bus lines, all of our taxis, basically all where you know people are parking and stuff like that that this is the part of the airport where it's all going to be so right there you can see here i'm following the highway i don't want the connection because again i want to make sure that they're using that long on and off ramp that we created a couple seconds ago and that is one way of doing it to make sure that they're forced to use that loop now we don't know in city skylines 2 i'm just going off my script we don't know in city skylines 2 is we don't know if airport traffic is going to be incredibly hard, like a lot of it or very minimal or what. 
So, all right, let's get back to what I was building. So next, you see here we have the runway in the way. So what I'm going to try to build is in real life, so you're gonna see here, in real life, I'm going 90 by 90 to leave that lane. I wanna leave this lane wide open because, well, it's not very realistic to have big buildings or decent sized buildings in the way of the runway. So you're gonna see that I'm gonna do something similar on both sides and kind of mirror it, but that's something to keep in mind, guys. Do not build skyscrapers right in front of that, that <laughs> runway and it, it will not look realistic. All right, now that we have all of this in place, what we're trying to do next is, remember, this is going to be parking lots and we're gonna keep everything very tightly compact to each other. So we're gonna go out with a 90 degree road and we're gonna come back down and we're just gonna make a little bit of a grid. Because obviously, well, all of our City Skylines 2 parking lots, we know are either square or rectangle. <laughs> I mean, that that's actually, that's the truth. So next, the first parking lot we wanna build is the above ground parking, and we also wanna have these large parking lots. So right there, just line up the large parking lots, place them down, and eventually I do get to the above ground ones. There you go. They're, they're officially above ground parking ramps, which they, they honestly look absolutely amazing. I do love the way they look and function. So very cool parking lots. We can jack up the prices very soon. We know that we know that people will park there even if it's $50. All right, next, what we'll do, what we have to do eventually, we're just going to get into very 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 small portion of it. I am going to add a few different roads and stuff like that. Uh well not roads, excuse me, but paths and stuff like that. But we will get into further detailing this area. For example, I noticed something that I wanted to do to this parking ramp area. And it's, you can see that there, where the above ground parking area is, you're gonna notice that we wanna grab a large plaza and that it could potentially fit perfectly between those two above ground parking. So what I did was I moved both of them over and this, is, this, this actually worked out amazing. So we're, we're right there, perfect and it went right down the middle. Look how awesome this looks. So this large park right down the middle, and again, it's gonna, you know, I know it's an airport, but this is gonna bring people downtown, or to our airport, rather. I know that seems weird, but it's it will it will definitely bring people because parks will, are a form of entertainment in city skylines too. So overall, I really love this parking area. I think it turned out really great. Now, I know we're not done yet and nothing is detailed, but overall, I like the start of this based on what we have to work with in this City Skylines 2 game. So just bear in mind, guys, um, you know, you, you can't, this is, this is not the City Skylines 2 DLC, so you can't completely customize everything to your liking, but we're trying to do the best we can. So next, I did go into this a little bit earlier. I did mention that over here, I wanted this to be an office park of some sort. Now, the problem with this office park idea is not that it was a bad idea, but I have no demand for offices. I mean, yeah, I know I'm staying the obvious. We don't have demand, so yet we can't actually build it. So what we need to do to build next was I wanted to add all of our services. So services such as the fire department, which is right here. It's very, actually, we should have upgraded the fire department. That little fire hall would not be, yeah, an airport fire hall would definitely be way bigger than that. So I apologize, but I did add that, um, you know, so that, that, that's fine. The firehouse for now will work. Then what I decided to do after that was I kept adding services such as police. So we wanted to add buildings that will actually do stuff for the surrounding area. And it's just not like fluff. You know, it's not just just empty space that has nothing. And towards the end of all this, you're going to see that, you know, it all comes together really nicely with all of our services. And all of these paths, by the way, guys, paths are amazing to add. And then if you add additional parking and stuff like that, we just want to fill this in where it's just not blank, empty space when we're creating our city skylines to airport. So again, 
We only have two services so far, but we're looking for additional buildings and parks and stuff like that where people can actually visit this area where we'll actually have foot traffic and stuff like that. But you're gonna see here, I'm gonna start adding some of the depots. So for example, the road maintenance depot. I added that because, well, A, you need to add additional ones. You just can't have one for your whole city. And B, it kind of fit what we are looking for. You know, we're looking for flatter buildings that can actually look good and fill in everything. And I feel like that was a really good ad so far. So very happy with this start. And again, paths are life. And you're gonna see here, we do add trees, but not extremely tall trees. But again, we do add trees and essentially we don't wanna get in the way of the runway. That is like key slash goal number one. Do not get in the way of the runway. Anyways. So right now we are adding the radio towers, which broadcast internet and stuff like that. And I, I did, oh, that was a good idea. Sorry, I do voiceovers. So I added a medical clinic. So that means people around here will have medical services. Definitely, if you do, if you ever, you know, have gone to an airport, they definitely do have an area for medical because, you know, airports have a lot of everything <laughs> like they have good things happening bad things happening and so on so like essentially you know having a place where people can just get healthy and go to a wellness cl clinic that works perfect now the next i did add a service by the way right there i just added the taxi depot i actually did not have taxis in the city as of right now so that was actually part of our transportation upgrade, which was adding taxis. Now, I know that's not the most amazing, glamorous thing in the world, but definitely helps our city, especially when you can charge people $50 per taxi ride, which is a lot of money. Next, I wanted to build a bus depot. Now, the reason behind that is when you're when you're in playing City Skyline 2 is you're gonna have a ton of bus services and this is no different and that's why we want to add another depot where it gives us more buses that we can actually work with so you know we have more supply of buses where we can create more bus lines and obviously we are going to have a bus station in our parking area soon we will get to that but you can see here gradually everything started to build in on both sides now we have this middle area to look at very plain by the way extremely plain so not not too happy but you can see here that it that one-way street that i mentioned you can see more of it there and it just yeah it does not look perfect if we had more mods we would definitely be on to something so what i wanted to get into next is we want to build a bus station so what we want to do is I wanted to get it off the main line so I want to create it give it its own road and just expand up a little bit give it a, a one-way road in and out and so it just gives it a private area because bus lines create a lot of traffic a lot of traffic because there's a million buses trying to come and go in and out of where you're trying to you know just have the bus station basically so anyways we're gonna place it right about there and that fit actually really, really nicely. Very happy with that. Now, I do love a good parking lot next to it also because, I mean, if you are using the bus line, I would reckon, and you do drive there, I'm just assuming that you do need a place, a, a place to park your car. <clears throat> so you can see here, these paths though are absolutely amazing here in City Skylines too. That is the best form of detailing yet. So overall, very happy with the way things are currently going and things are looking right now. So let's go stop by our airports. Let's turn both of them on, raise the parking fees, and let's start making money and start the simulation again. So you can see here, it costs us a lot of money just to have both of these airports going. But you can see here, the overall design so far looks really good. I'm really happy with it, like extremely happy with it. So what we'll do next is we're gonna create the plane, the airplane lines, and I'm just gonna show you one example. So you click on the apron, you then click the blue airplane at the top, and then you complete the circuit. That's how you complete plane or airplane cargo or passenger lines in City Skylines too. So next, 
there's going to be a lot of traffic here in City Skylines 2. So next, our third upgrade, because technically taxi was the second um, transportation upgrade. The next one, the third one, is going to be a subway system here in our city. This is a massive, massive upgrade. So I'm going to put a disclaimer. Make sure you have a lot of money saved up for this. It's not because, you know, the subway, the subway depot, you know, costs a lot of money. It's not because of that. It's the upkeep is extremely expensive. So now that we have our subway system, what we need to do now, or I should say the subway depot, we need to create a subway line. So over here, we have our subway above ground station, which I think that is a perfect spot for. It's going to fit really, really nicely. So I'm I'm re actually really excited about this. But what I wanted to do next was, all right, we can place that down. No problem. You know, we can move it a little bit lower if we wanted to. That's absolutely OK. But what I want to show you next is these little small stations and they're called underground subway stations and you can click them and they are extremely, extremely, extremely small. Look at that. It barely takes up a couple tiles. So what's really cool is I want to place these around our the main parts of our downtown. So this is, I guess the next part is where are we going to place these underground subway stations? You can see here we can, can also upgrade part of it for food services and stuff like that, but we'll get into that later on. All right, we already know that we want our subway station right there, but let's go deep into our city and figure out where in the world we should place it. So one of the main areas that I was thinking was definitely right in front of our college in our part of Newtown. This is our first college we built, and I feel like this would be a fantastic spot because, well, we're in the middle of a lot of density, and, right, and people going to college can easily take the subway to and from class. I mean, I guess if unless you lived in like the dorms, then I guess you'd not want to do that. But we're going to place down the train station, and we're going to get rid of that building that was building over it. And that look how small this this is going to so many people are going to be able to use the subway. It's going to be ridiculous. Next, we want to go into our downtown area. Now, what we need to find is a spot in our downtown where it's very traffic heavy, which is which we want to. Oh, God, I just play. I just realized I placed. Oh, God, I placed down. I placed down an underground Oh God, there it is. Click it and de demolish it. I just placed down the underground subway on a park. So that's not what we want, but we want to place the underground subway system where there are a lot of cars. So since we know people will want to drive there, we know that they can potentially use the subway instead as a substitution. So again, we, we're going to place one there and we're going to place one further down our downtown area because remember, Rush hour traffic is so bad in this game that your your downtown will be overrun and it <laughs> you're not going to love it. Anyways, I think we'll leave it for two, but I did. I, I'm not sure. I'm going to put this disclaimer. I was thinking about this, that if we place one another one downtown, can we put the subway under the water? I don't know that yet. I, I honestly do not know that because I have not tested it yet, but we will see. So anyways, all right, there is station number two. Now let's keep going throughout our town. The next place I would like to add a underground subway station is there's a, we have another college there, but yes, we placed that down really nicely now, but the problem is parking lots. We have a bunch of parking lots in the way. So when you have anarchy on, you can actually build and place anything anywhere. So that was not a good spot, and I did not want to place it in the middle of the college, but like right there could work, but I'm not sure if I'm a fan of that. Anyways, we'll, we'll keep that there for now, and we're going to go to our other college. So this is where our medical campus is and our engineering campus, and I, I feel like this was another prime location because, hey, guys, we have density of a lot of people living here 
and they'll be able to use it. And we have both of our schools, which is like a win win. So again, we're, we're trying to place down these underground stations where it will be best utilized for people and them not driving everywhere. So, so far I I've liked every single placement of our city skylines to subway stations. So very happy with that. I did think about placing one there and we did. So that works out perfect. Next, this is where it gets a little bit unrealistic. I placed one in our commercial district. Then I placed one in, or commercial, excuse me, in both of our industrial areas so that people can get to and from work. And so I never see this lack of you know, lack of labor, essentially. I don't want to see that ever again. Anyways, I figured, so I'm just going to put a disclaimer. A subway system would not go this far and long. Subways are mainly, mainly, mainly for short distances. So anyways, now that we have our subway in place, I added, I laid down all the track. That took literally an hour. So I did not want to lay down all the track, but you can see here we have two subway lines. One of them goes counterclockwise and the other one goes clockwise. So eventually people are going to use these. You can set the price of the ticket, which is $16. And there's, ooh, there, we have a couple mixed up uh, subway trains. One, one is blue and the other one is green. I feel like they should not be mixing and matching like that. But anyways, there is our above ground subway area. Now what I want to do next is I wanted to add additional commercial shopping. So instead of this just being your normal, you know, like, how do I explain this? Instead of this, this just being like an airport parking lot, let's try to add some shopping. So if people do want to drive or take the Metro or take the bus, they can make it a shopping trip essentially. So I did want to add the additional commercial space and we're going to add a little bit more on top of that once we add a few more paths and stuff like that. But I feel like making this a mini shopping center like was really, really cool. And again, bringing people down here, just not just to you know come to the airport, but just for something to do. Like here where, where I live in the United States, we have what we have an outlet mall and people come all, all, you know, come from all over from the U S and Canada just to go shopping to get cheaper clothes and stuff like that. So it's like, this could be our own little shopping outlet area, you know, where people can park and just walk around and go to shops outside and stuff like that. It's, it's going to be, it's really, really cool. I'm really happy with that. And you know, it, it's going to end up turning out really great. So I, I know the end results. So I know that this will turn out great. And it's just, it's like one of those things that you have to see it to believe it type thing. So anyways, I did add a couple more parks and stuff like that. We know that parks, again, bring people to our downtown. Now definitely adding more. Yeah, look at that. Oh, and these are going to be some nice low density buildings that fit that perfectly. So don't be afraid, you know, to do something different with the airports. Again, you don't want just that that blank empty space, you know, we didn't need all parking lots with blank empty space. So I guess that was just something to keep in mind, you know, when you're building your city skylines to airport, um, I am adding mail, but look at that. You can't even, you can't even get mail service to the city skylines to airport shame. <laughs> and who would know that like adding mail service would make such a, I don't know. It just, honestly, it just, it, it, Mail service and city skylines too drives me crazy. Anyway, I'll just leave it at that because we're not here to talk about it. Anyways, so right there, we're going to add a few different taxi stands and stuff like that. So people can use taxis to and from and bus. Ooh, look at that. And we added a bus stop in front of our metro um, or our subway lines. That is really cool. So we're additional ways to get to and from the metro. You're going to use the bus and the taxi or you can park your car everything is starting to turn out really nicely and it wait till we start detailing in a few minutes this is gonna turn into something that's just absolutely incredible and that i'm very proud of making you know just building it in general all right so far everything is looking a-okay except okay that 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 looks ugly that middle area looks absolutely horrendous so what we're gonna do next is we're gonna speed up 
and we're just gonna add some detailing to this area I didn't want to go slow motion but I figured having some of these circular you know just flower um, bush areas with the trees just made it a little bit more interesting that that's just my perspective now the problem is is right now it's fall or excuse me it's winter so though those trees look really ugly right now so though just keep that in mind that they will actually turn a different color later on when it's actually summer or spring anyways so we're gonna keep detailing so you can see here that we have all of our parks are gonna get all of these trees and stuff like that and just make it look as filled in as possible so it just doesn't look boring and this definitely adds to it just by adding those trees and bushes like oh it, it turned out excellent all right so now let's backtrack a little bit so I wanted just to show you that I did create the residential area I'm not going to show you the full residential build because well you've seen it before but what I want to show you was an American like an American residential area so let's just get started with that so this is going to be very simple so we're going to go up and then we're just going to zigzag it throughout this entire area with no rhyme or reason now you can if you really want to you can use medium-sized roads which I in hindsight should have and look at that create that outside connection there you go but I don't I only use a single lane road but what we'll do next is just zigzag it so we're gonna we're gonna have this really nice straight road and just create zigzags now I'm not gonna use curved roads but I'm just using these straight roads and what I'll end up doing is I'll use the roundabout mod to create cul-de-sacs there you go there are all the cul-de-sacs now I'm gonna show you the end result because I didn't want to show you everything because I did not want to bore you to death so let's get going so here is our final city skylines to airport detailed build and with everything filled in on both sides of our airport so we have our parking lot shopping center then we have our business center to the left and I think everything turned out absolutely amazing I know I'm being biased because I built it but like look at those small commercial shops where people can come shopping because hey we have five different forms of transportation right in this vicinity so there's people will be getting here so it's it's awesome so there's our underground subway system you can see here 58 people waiting we have both of our subway lines are currently working there is our bus station which we have one two we have four bus lines going to we have 124 people waiting so everybody is using those bus lines which is perfect now guys remember the overground parking buildings look how amazing what in the world happened I don't know I, I don't get it I don't know I had to pause and I don't know why that just happened anyways the above ground parking with our large plaza looks absolutely fantastic now here this is my favorite part of my airport build is this detailed part of our airport so obviously we didn't want buildings but we wanted a couple parks that were going to fit in for plane spotting that's where people watch planes take off and land and in this blue area oh I could not build in it I would have loved to expand that park but we cannot expand that runway any bit you know we couldn't expand towards the runway any sooner I also did the same thing on this side which you know to create symmetry create the same type of look but over here I change it up so originally like I said I wanted office buildings you can clearly see that did not happen so I have a sorting factory and a couple post offices which both fit exactly what we're looking for like a business type building then we have our taxi depot we have the park depot we have our police station firehouse and we added a couple more buildings oh and upgrade a medical clinic and stuff like that so that business park still did what I wanted to do I just wish I had office buildings and office demand but at the time of building this I did not have that but overall really cool build I really like it so now let's take a peek let's take a peek at our airports so we have okay so here's the international airport and the major issue with a city skylines 2 airport is you can see all of the blue that is the airport the generic airport itself we cannot 
edit that. We can edit the roads, we can add, as of right now, we are unable to do anything with it. So that makes things a little bit tricky because look at that, there is our railway service, the passenger and cargo train lines. So that makes things a little bit harder. So now let's click on the airport itself. So our airport is called James Smith International Airport. Our founders airport. Yes, he named it after himself. That is kind of ego, that, that's got a lot of ego for him going. But here is the International Airport, and you can see here we have up to 800 tons. Now, this is the coolest part of the whole build. So 800 tons of cargo, which is very small, and you'll see why when I get to the regional part of the airport. But what's amazing is we have direct flights from Sydney, Australia, Mexico City, Louisville, Kentucky. Now, people are going to be like, well, why Louisville? Well, that is the home base of UPS and FedEx. So where all of our cargo is going. We also go to Spain, we go to Madrid, London, Paris, and to a bunch of different, you know, different international cities. You can see here we can, you know, add the ticket price. You can see how many airplanes. You can see here, wow, the length of going to Sydney was 36 kilometers, holy cow. Anyways, you can see additional flights. We have the Dublin, Dubai, and we also have Barbie Airlines, which is a top secret airline that our our founder james smith uses on his own it's his private airplane he calls it barbie airlines yeah don't get me started i don't understand why he did that but anyways we have international flights one flight per day for each of these destinations so now that we have that in place now let's go over to our regional airport so this why did we build this regional airport so like we showed you before when we were building is that cargo train station or the cargo part of the airport. So the cargo airport and the regional airport are one airport connected together. So that connection brings trains connecting to our regional airport. So now let's click on it. There we go. So sports monkey regional. God, who named that? Ugh, that is incredible. Anyways, you can see here all of our airlines and all of the lines themselves are insane. So that's a lot of colors first and foremost and drives me insane seeing that by the way. So next, what I want to show you is the cargo airport itself can handle up to 7,200 tons, which right now we're only using 4,040. But if we go back to James Smith International, you can see it only has 800 tons. So this regional airport is way better for using cargo airports and getting goods in and out of our city. So you can see here also the amount of goods, like the number of different goods that are transported in and out is way more. Um, James Smith International only had like five or six. Anyways, so since this is a regional airport, we only have direct flights to San Francisco, Miami, Florida, Buffalo, New York, and New York City. Those are direct single flights per day that are going to and from Stamford. So that's just something to keep in mind is when you do have direct flights, make sure you're using the correct number of flights per day based on the demand for it. Now, finally, I just wanna get into our American city. Yep, this was the Americanized neighborhood next to the airports. And you can see here, it's called Hillside Acres. And overall, I like the look of this a lot. I know it's very American with all the roundabouts and all the parks and stuff like that. Everything is just very spread out compared to other parts of our city. Over here, you can see that we do have parking lots with additional commercial. Then we do have the mixed use buildings. Guys, in the comment section below, do the mixed use buildings look too big for the area? I don't know, they might, but anyways, my favorite part of our neighborhood is this part in particular where we just move the roads and the trees and stuff like that. It creates kind of like an entrance to our small town, uh, the small residential area of Hillside Acres. So guys, overall, really, really love this build. Like I showed you before, the underground subway system, everything working out really well. And I feel like we successfully met all of our needs right now we're making 4.3 million dollars per month which is absolutely amazing and our production is going very well getting goods in and out of the city so guys 
Please let me know in the comment section below, what did you guys think of the international build, the upgrades that we made to our transportation? Please let me know. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great rest of your day.